So in order to chocolate cover something, we need to understand what it's like to dip a solid into a liquid and have that liquid stick. And there's two pieces of this. One is about stickiness and adhesion, which will be in a different video. And the other one is about what makes the fluid thicker or flow better or not. And that requires this idea called viscosity. So we're going to talk about the concept of viscosity, how you change it, and how it's related to coating thickness. So let's imagine that you had a drinking glass full of two different fluids and you'd stuck a straw in each of them. So this over here is a nice cold cup of water and this over here is a nice cold cup of corn syrup. And that's you and you are about to drink the water through the straw and then you want to also try drinking the corn syrup through the straw. You may not wish to try this at home because that would probably be unpleasant. But uh, what would you notice about this? Well, um, the water, as you generate a pressure difference between the water in the cup and your own mouth, the water flows pretty easily in a way that you are used to doing and comes to your thirsty self at a pretty reasonable rate, again, that you're probably used to if you've been drinking through straws. What would happen to the corn syrup? And if you don't want to pretend you're drinking corn syrup, like imagine it's a milkshake because uh, that'll have much the same effect. So the milkshake, you may notice that you have to generate a lot more suction with your mouth, perhaps. You have to change that pressure change. Uh, or if you leave exactly the same pressure change, you'll notice that the flow rate is less. Uh, it's much slower as the uh, fluid comes to your mouth. And so what you're noticing here is a difference in viscosity. So this is the symbol for viscosity. And viscosity is most easily thought of as the resistance of a fluid to flow. And here is a simplified equation that describes what's going on in our drinking with a straw example. And I'll explain this as we go. So this is what's called the Pasteur's law or the Hagen-Pasteur law, and it is the pressure difference, so the pressure difference between uh, the place where we're drinking from down here in the cup and the place where we're drinking to up in our mouths is going to be equal to uh, the flow rate, volumetric flow rate, that's what Q is in this case, uh, times a proportionality constant. And the proportionality constant has two different things in it. One that we're not all that concerned with right now is the physical setup of the straw, so things about the straw diameter and length and uh, whether it's circular cross-section or some other weird shape. So that's I've lumped that into something we're going to ignore at the moment. And the viscosity. Okay, so this equation tells us that for the same change in pressure, if the viscosity goes up, so we have a milkshake and the viscosity is higher, that means then Q, the flow rate, how much milkshake you get in your mouth versus time, is going to go down. So if you try and drink a milkshake through a straw the same exact way that you're trying to drink water through the straw, it's going to show up more slowly. It also tells us that if we increase the pressure difference, so we change that delta P uh, for something where the viscosity is the same, that'll also make the, the flow rate go up. Okay, so this means uh, viscosity. Uh, what can we do with viscosity? So if viscosity is low, things flow easily. And if viscosity is high, they flow, I would say, less easily. All right, so what does that mean for us and chocolate? Well, let's move forward and find out. So to think about chocolate and viscosity, we first have to think about what chocolate is. So chocolate always is a minimum of three things, and 
uh, often it's actually four. So what's in this picture over here? We have the solids. And an important thing about the cocoa solids is their shape and their size. And those solids are something we have to be careful of because if they are too large, and what do I mean by too large? They are bigger than 50 microns. A micron, one micron, equals one times 10 to the minus sixth meters. So they're teeny weeny little things. Uh, 50 microns or bigger tastes in our mouths uh, like grit. So that's nasty. We, we don't want that. So we want cocoa solids to be smaller than 50 microns so that the chocolate can be smooth and creamy. Uh, so chocolate solids, in terms of fluid behavior, they are solid all the time. They are not a thing that melts. They may as well be little bricks. They are pieces of uh, uh, cellulosic and uh, uh, material that uh, does not dissolve, uh, but contains lots of good tasting stuff. Okay, so what else is here in our, uh, our chocolate? Well, we have what I put in blue to be a water phase. And that's where our sugar, and if this is milk chocolate, the milk is. So that's also dispersed within the matrix of the chocolate, uh, usually as little blobs. Then finally, we have what it's all trapped inside of, which is the fat or the cocoa butter. Um, so what does this mean? Well, sugar melts uh, up above around 300 Fahrenheit-ish, and... Uh, so that, usually when we're melting chocolate, that is not what we're melting. Cocoa solids, I already mentioned, don't melt. So what are we melting when we melt this? We're melting the fat and the cocoa butter. And this is important for a viscosity perspective because uh, not only is this melting to a liquid, it means it still has these little uh, other elements, which are probably acting like solids, floating around in it. And that's always going to affect the viscosity. It won't behave ever exactly like just straight up water because from a fluid flow perspective, it's got little pieces of rocks in it. Nevertheless, we can come up with relationships for viscosity of chocolate versus temperature. And also, uh, the, uh, the viscosity of chocolate is therefore going to depend on the contents of the chocolate. We'll talk about that again in a second. So here we have a graph from a journal article on the rheological behavior of chocolate. This is only looking at one particular kind of chocolate and it's graphing shear strain rate versus shear stress, which is uh, not gonna be familiar to a lot of uh, y'all necessarily, but the thing you need to know is that the slope here is equal to the viscosity. And if you look carefully at this graph, you'll see that the temp in, uh, temperature increase points in that direction. And if you uh, think about what that means, if you make little signs for the slope, you see that the viscosity goes down as the temperature goes up if you look carefully at this graph. Um, and you can also see there's a part where the graph isn't actually a line, it's a little bit bendy, which means that, strictly speaking, the relationship on the previous page about uh, where we assume viscosity was a constant is not, uh, strictly speaking, true. That for different uh, amounts of push you might put on chocolate, sometimes it'll behave uh, in a, in a nice fashion, though the more you push, the faster it goes, but sometimes it will behave differently than that. And our, our term for this is, is non-Newtonian fluid. But for uh, quite a lot of its range, we can just look at this and say, aha, temperature up, viscosity down. That's uh, interesting and useful. Um, something that makes this curve happen down at the end is the fact that there are solids in liquid chocolate. And if you imagine mud and compare the behavior of mud to water, you know that that means the viscosity acts 
uh, higher. So it, it resists flow more because there's these little solid particles here, there, even though the fluid in the middle is something that has a lower viscosity. So finally, let's bring this all together by looking at the impact this would have on dipping something. And what I want to convince you with this little graphic here is that I have this box, I'm dipping it and say that's melted chocolate. I pick it up, it, I let it drip a little. And uh, what's happening here is kind of like what was happening with the straw, um, just a little bit. So you have a solid, which is in our case, a strawberry. And let's assume for the moment we have good adhesion between the liquid uh, chocolate and the strawberry. And so that is not moving, not moving. Uh, and then we have this layer of chocolate that I made yellow, uh, just because that's a color that's available here. And on the outside edge of that, um, nothing is holding onto it besides the fluid that's next to it. So it's going to tend to drip down. But as you get closer to the uh, strawberry, the strawberry is not moving. Uh, and so that tends to hold on to the chocolate. Does that make sense? And gravity is pulling down on this whole thing. Gravity is the force that is, is pulling against us here. And uh, if you think about it, you can kind of imagine how this works out to be a little bit like the straw problem on the, on the first slide, only backwards. And there's some things about the math that change a little bit because this is gravity-driven flow, not pressure-driven flow. But the essential element that remains the same is that the thickness of this, uh, of this drippy layer, the thickness that the strawberry is able to hold up against the force of gravity is going to be proportional to the viscosity. So uh, if you want a really thin chocolate layer on something, all other things being equal, not monkeying with the ingredients in the chocolate yet, um, and not thinking about uh, adhesion, because that's going to be in a separate video, uh, the more viscous we can make it, the thicker the layer we will have. And from the last uh, slide, we learned that viscosity is inversely proportional to temperature. So we pretty much want the chocolate to be as cool as it can be and still molten in order to get a good chocolate coating. 